With the Pico 2W launch came a degree of flexibility for our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth projects. We no longer are tied into the Pico W and Pico 2W formats because the RM2 module is available separately. So I can now add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability to other form factor RP2350 boards and RP2040 boards. Let me show you how. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world, the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. The RM2 module is the same chip and technology we've used on the Pico W and the Pico 2W. It's just now available for us to connect to other boards. That means telling the Pico SDK that we're using a custom board configuration though, our first challenge. To demonstrate the RM2 module actually works with three separate RP2040 and RP2350 boards, I'm going to build a web server client to call a simple web service. I could secure this web service using our video sponsor, Wolf's SSL's library, as I've done in some other videos. The approach here I've used before in this video and on my web service client course on Udemy. So if you want to understand more about that, then take a look at the link in the description. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment link in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco and I appreciate your help in getting me there and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. Now with the original Pico product set, we were really, really limited because the only way we would really give Wi-Fi access was to actually use a Pico 2W. And then that fixes us into a board format and what we actually have to use. Okay, there are other options. And indeed with my original lightsaber, I did use an ESP01S to give me Wi-Fi and you could go other ways, but let's stick within the Raspberry Pi product set. Your only option was the Pico W. Now with the Pico 2 W launch and, and that, we now have that whole Wi-Fi access module is actually now available to us as a separate product. And uh, through certain some suppliers, including Pi Moroni, we can buy that as a, as a separate product. And then we can interface that directly into the uh, any of the Raspberry Pi um, chipsets, RP2350 or RP2040 uh, base boards uh, in different formats, which is quite nice because I can do different shaped formats and smaller potential boards than I could possibly do using just a Pico W or a Pico 2W. Also, I get the ability to use those uh, three GPIO ports that are available on here in any format I wish. Um, it's a 3.3 volt device. It's nice and easy to configure and connect up. Uh, let me go through a couple of configurations and show you how to uh, get this working. This video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. Wolf SSL provide libraries to secure our systems using encryption and trust mechanisms. The libraries are available in both GPL version 2 community support and with commercial support. The latest version of the Wolf SSL TLS library is pre-ported to the RP2040 and RP2350 by securely seeding the cryptographic random number generator. I have several videos on how to use Wolf SSL to secure your communications. Go check out the Wolf SSL products today. So the first board I'm going to try this on is the Pimeroni Pico 2 Plus. And this is an RP2350 board with 520 kilobytes of SRAM, 16 meg of uh, flash, and an additional 8 meg of PS RAM. Not that I'm going to use all of those additional capabilities. You may remember I've used this board before as part of my video to these displays um, for my name badge. This time I'm using the board because there's a connector actually on the back of this that has got some additional GPIO ports enabled from this. And there's a great connector already pre-built to connect this straight into the RM2 module. So I can plug these straight in without having to worry about breadboards or anything and get this working. So all of the code, of course, I'm going to share to make this work on GitHub. 
so you can go and see everything that I'm doing here and demonstrating. So when we start a project, you know, we have our CMake file, um, CMake lists file to control the build process. And we generally say in there what the board is that we want to use and the platform that we want to use. So um, here in this example, I'm saying that I'm using an RP2350 platform and the, the board I'm going to use in this case is going to be a special config board, a Pimeroni Pico Plus 2 with an RM2. Um, now that we, you know, you might have done that and put a Pico 2 in there or a Pico in there. Um, where does that come from? Let's just have a quick look at where this uh, information is coming from and what's actually going on behind the scenes. So I've got the Pico SDK210 files open here. And this board uh, configuration is coming from in here, source, boards, and include. And there's a whole set of um, boards here, that the standard boards that you can actually set this to. And a lot of stuff that, you know, I've never even tried. But let's just have a look at one. So let's pick the Pimeroni Pico Plus 2W. Um, so this is an interesting board, I think, because uh, it's uh, an RP2350 uh, board and it's also got Wi-Fi capability. Now, it's basically just a set of hash defines that actually set up what pins uh, everything is connected to. And it's got all of the stuff for the defaults to start with, uh, for default um, IP, these Picos, Flash, Memory, etc. And then it goes on to defining the CYW43, i.e. the Wi-Fi chip and how that's all connected up and all the pins that it's using for that. Now that's, okay, quite interesting. There's one other uh, key little interesting bit in that, and that's these two lines here. Now they're comments, so you generally ignore them and not worry about them. But actually, uh, those are being processed by a bit of Python scripting that is run during the make process. And um, it's using those to actually set some additional uh, parameters in the CMake system. So they are really, really quite important to get into your own board file. So we could create our new board file actually in this folder here and just add it in with all of these other ones. And that would work perfectly fine. Um, there's a couple of problems with that. One, I can't share it in the repo with you very easily because then it's in my copy of my Pico SDK files rather than in the repo that I'm sharing with you. And secondly, I really don't like changing uh, the official distributed repo from um, Raspberry Pi and, and altering that directly. I want things in my project. So can I do it in my project? Yes, you can. Let me tell you a little bit about that. So if we want to override that ourselves, we can, and we can write that file. And I've done that, and I've put it in a folder here called uh, boards. And so I've got a magic new boards file, which uh, is going to be for a, basically a Pimeroni's Pico Plus 2 and an RM2 connected together. And uh, I've set this up and I've copied largely the Raspberry Pi file. I've even included their, their copyrights on it which probably I shouldn't, but anyway, because uh, it's sort of, this is a modified version if for what my purposes. Um, and I've placed in here the um, the platform and the uh, uh, CYW43 support so that, that though we know that that will get processed, uh, those comments by the CMake system in order to set things up correctly. And then in here down the end, basically the first part of this is just a copy of everything that is for the Pico 2 plus, uh, plus 2. Um, and then down the end, we've got the CYW343 configuration. And fortunately, Pimeroni gave me this wonderful line of what you need to do if you're running this all in Python. Um, and uh, that, uh, uh, which I'm not, but that Python line told me all of the configurations I needed to do. So to set up the WL register on, um, that's on uh, pin 32 or uh, GP32. The data out is GP35. Um, the uh, SPI data interface is on uh, GP35 again. 
wake the host is 35, the clock is on 34, and the chip select is 33. Um, and that uh, there's three GPIO outs available off of the CYW43, um, and uh, you could have a LED on zero, but actually I'm not got anything at all. So I just copied those in. Things like that you might expect to find on a Pico 2 or W or a um, Pico 2 plus W uh, for doing the voltage configuration and looking at VBUS and VSYS that uh, are common on those. We I've not configured those in these examples, so I don't need to set those up. So I've just left them commented out um, just so I can explain what I'm doing and a, a bit of a prompt to remind me to, to tell you guys about that. So that actually is our ball configuration. Now, let's go back to that CMake list file because it's got to find that board's configuration. And the way that you do that is by setting the Pico's board's header directory uh, uh, definition in your CMake's list.txt file. And you see I've set that to be that boards folder there. Um, now, this is uh, not a very commonly talked about. And um, I can't say that I've actually ever read any documentation mentioning the existence of the Pico board's header directory uh, definition either. So, um, how you're meant to have magically understood this, I'm not entirely sure. But hey, we we do, and this is how you do it. So um, take this as uh, magic Dr. John EA um, a content of how to get this to work. So what's our example actually going to do? What am I actually going to do with this on my Pico 2 Plus with that uh, RM2? Well, the code for this um, is something that I actually have done previously and you've probably seen. It's my approach to do web services on, on uh, this platform. So what I'm basically doing here is running up a free RTOS application uh, with Wi-Fi capability using core HTTP from free RTOS to do uh, web services. And I'm basically going to connect to Wi-Fi, print out what my IP address is, and then I'm going to connect to just a local um, web server for me that's just running a, a little web service and it's going to return the time in a JSON string for me. Um, so I'm going to use my request object uh, to get that URL and that's it. So it's HTTP get, get the response back and I'm going to print the payload. Um, so very simple, but it will demonstrate that we can use that RM2 module connected up as we've got it connected up to our Pico 2 Plus, and uh, that I can basically, yeah, do issue a web service call across it. And here we go, I'm going to demonstrate this. Uh, we're going to connect to Wi Fi, my access point, and uh, then I'm going to uh, print out the IP address and get back our web service call, all using that RM2 module. So I can do exactly the same thing here using a Pico 2. Now, of course, I don't have an extra nice connector on the back of my Pico 2 with additional ports that aren't previously exposed on the GPIO pins either side. So I'm going to have to use existing GPIO pads and I'm going to have to place it on a breadboard. And uh, yes, it looks somewhat of a mess. So let's just talk about it looking at that uh, nice little graphic instead. So I decided to generally use the pins um, around the um, AD connector pins. They just happen to be in the right place and having the right sort of SPI uh, one can connection capability. Um, and they're out of the way from most other things I want to do. And so I've, I've shown you there just in text of where each other the connections are going to connect. You notice that I'm actually only connecting using the right hand side of the RM2 module. The left hand side is not going to actually be connected to anything. So that makes it a little bit neater, I guess. Configuring this for the Pico 2 really isn't any different. So in my Pico 2 example, uh, in the CMake list, you see I've again got a magic new board type called the Pico 2 underscore RM2. And again, I've got that Pico board headers directory set up. So I can pull in um, this new definition from up here. Again, it's an RP2350 board and it's got Pico um, CYW43 support. 
And again, again, this is copied directly from the Pico SDK, and then I'm going to add on to the end the configuration for the CW CYW43, i.e. the RM2 module. And um, I'm then connecting it up as I've just talked about using uh, put pin 27 for WL on, uh, data on 28, um, clock on 26, and the chip select on 22. And the example here of the code is exactly the same as we've just looked at, talked um, for the Pico 2 Plus. Um, it's just going to go in and do um, a uh, lookup of uh, or a HTTP get onto this URL. This isn't just an RP2350 thing though. We can actually bring this back and do this to any of the RP2040 boards as well. So I've got an RP2040 zero here and uh, that's exposing uh, enough ports for us uh, to actually do the same connection up. In fact, I'm using just about the same GPIO connections as I used for the Pico 2. Again, it's going to look a little bit dodgy on my uh, breadboard, but uh, that's what you'd expect. So all these magic tricks are not just Pico 2 and RP2350 available. We can actually backload them onto uh, RP2040. So my RP2040 zero here, um, again, We've got a magic new board type called the, um, sorry, here we go, the RP2040 underscore zero underscore RM2. And again, this is a magic new board definition that I've put into the boards folder. And um, again, it is based on um, the previous um, examples that were well, based on the standard uh, uh, RP2040 zero uh, header file that's provided within the SDK. And again, I've just add, um, added in uh, this line, which is kind of key because we need to have CYW43 enabled. And then the definitions that, of how I'm connecting up the CYW43. And of course, I'm using largely the same pins as I used for the Pico 2, um, 27 for the one, WL on, 28 for data, and 26 for the clock, and then I'm going to use 29 this time because I the the RP2040 zeros unusually have 29 available, so I use that for chip select. And again, the example is going to do the same thing. So all we're actually going to do is um, I have turned blink off on this example actually because we don't actually have a a uh, available LED in quite the same form on these boards. But um, yeah, the important bit that I'm going to do is actually go and grab uh, that URL and do an HTTP get on that. So really, there's little point adding an RM2 module to a Pico, a Pico 2 or a Pico 2 Plus. It's much easier to buy the W version and where it's already integrated. When I start to get excited about this is adding an RM2 module onto things like the RM2040 Zero or a RP2040 touch, or an RP2040 camera module. Suddenly, I'm making these boards much more capable. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment link in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And of course, I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button. It encourages me. And please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.